Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone is well and happy and safe. All right, well, I'm going to get started today. This is, we're coming to the end of our, my life in the country, and um, this is story number 14. All right, today's short story. The many, the many forts and camps of children. This was the days before cell phones, computers, video, and games. And we had one small black and white TV that was mostly the purview of mother and her soap operas. But three young imaginations led us to far travels. We would take to the woods for the entire day, not coming in until called for dinner, and it was not so uncommon to have played in mud puddles and dirt, to the point that mom yelled to all of us to take off all of our clothes, and daddy would hose us off with a hose pipe, and then we could come in and get, <coughs> then we could come in and take a bath. <coughs> Excuse me. The playground was thus. The trailer was in the middle of a large clearing. Far down a road to the left behind the trailer was the huge lake Daddy, Daddy had built. Off to the right of the dam road was the meat sheds and a clearing surrounded by old growth pines. And in front of the trailer were trails that led deep into the woods. On one side was the field that Maud had come through that one day. And on the other side was a trash pit and a huge grassy growth that marked the fill lines of the sewage system. The rest of the 48 acres was ours to play with if we could, but as I was only six, Stu was only four, and Kelly only three, we didn't much actually care. Our most stupendous camp was a complex of three log cabins made from the leavings of clearing pines for the mink shed clearing. It would take, <clears throat> we would take one of those logs, peel them smooth and clean of all matter, stack them in cross hatches, chink them with mud, and then move in old rugs, furniture, and anything we could pilfer from mother. We even made one of them a two-story cabin. Also in these pine woods was deep pine straw. We took chicken wire, pine straw, and a piece of daddy's old green army tent and made a cupola for lounging. This cupola was complete with pine straw, chicken wire <coughs> walls, <coughs> and pine straw, chicken, uh, pine straw tent covered couches. And it was in that camp that we befriended, um, literally befriended, a yellow jacket. He would fly around with his yellow body and his black stripes, and we called him Jackie. And he would sit, he would visit us day after day, alighting on our finger or on a toe. And he never stung us. We were mischievous as well. And one of the, in the great long grasses that grew over the septic lines, we crawled into a spot and with knives we cut the grass in a circle, making a floor. Now, when we were called to dinner, mom and dad could hear us, but they couldn't find us. Our farthest camp was the most magical. In front of the trailer, down the long trail, <clears throat> where I had rode Bucking Shorty, we hiked for nearly an hour, finding ourselves deeper and deeper into the woods. Suddenly, we found a long, deep ravine with no trees growing on its floor. But there were huge trees growing around the ravine, and they gave it ever-present shade and coolness. The floor of the ravine was fragrant with short grasses and the dirt itself was clean and soft and sweet smelling. Most fabulous of all were the walls. The walls of the ravine were completely covered with soft, dark green spongy moss, so we named it the Moss Hills. For countless occasions we explored the Moss Hills and even dug ourselves a cave in the soft dirt of the walls from a depression made by great roots of trees high above. It was in this camp that we would sing and dance, completely naked. Once I ventured to the opposite walls of the moss hills, leaving the smaller ones plain, and came upon an open field with tall brown grass, and up popped a long bushy tail and a pointy nose and ears, and the fox sailed away at the sight of me. So it was that the three of us enchanted children would decide on a morning which camp we would go to on that particular day, or explore the magical hummock or trail a tree and make a new one. That's the end of today's story.